has quaked before Moved by the sound of its voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Will be calmed and broken from my regard And through it all Come on, let's just think for just a moment. I've never interrupted a song, but I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit just interrupted right, just interrupted right here. And when we sing, so let go, my soul. Just let go and trust. So when we say, let go, my soul, we're telling our mind, just let go. Just let go and trust God. We're telling our will, just let go and trust God. We're telling our emotions, just let go and trust God. We sing that over and over and we say, so let go, my soul. Just let go. Because we're clinging. We're clinging to the pain too tight. We're clinging to the worry too tight. We're clinging to the anxiety too tight. And it's time that we let it go. So we're going to sing those lines again and we're going to go back into that. So let go, my soul. And I want you to think about what it is that you're hanging on to and you think, well, I, I don't mean to be hanging on to it, but it's, it's dominating your thought process. It's dominating everything you're doing. And so when you sing that now, we say, so let go, my soul. You're telling that. Your mind, your will, and your emotions just let go and trust God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, All the worry, all the cares, Father God, we just let go. If that's you, I just want you to hold your hand up, and I want you to just release it right now. Just release it to God right now. 
Say, Father, I let go. I release it to you. I'm telling my mind. I'm telling my will. I'm telling my emotions. Let go and trust God.
if it's well with you, then we need to we need to rejoice to God. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you. I'm so thankful that I have the ability to reach out to God when days are tough, when days are long. And I can say through it all, through it all, my eyes are on him. And it is well. It is well with me. I may not like the situation. It may look bleak. It may look rough. It may be dim. But as long as I keep my eyes on God, see, I can't focus on that. Have you ever looked at a picture that, I I think about this particular picture where the couple is standing in the background and they're taking the pictures of the wedding rings and they're focused in on the wedding rings and the couple and all the background is all faded out. Well, the reason that is is because the focus was on the rings. And if you'll focus on God, the rest of it will just fade away. It's where do you have your focus? Where's your focus at? Because see, if our focus is on the worry, if our focus is on the unpaid bills, if our focus is on the the pandemic, if our focus is on the politics, if our focus is on all that, then it's a scary deal. It's an overwhelming deal. But if we put our eyes on Him and fix our focus right there, then the rest of it, you don't see it as much, you don't hear it as much, because you're seeing the face of God and you're hearing the voice of God. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we set our eyes on you. We focus on you tonight. Lord, may we not be so consumed with the chaos of the world. May we not be so overtaken by the the noise. But Father God, we fix our focus on you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strange. Sing it one more time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the thing. Father, we turn our face towards you. Believing that the things of this world will grow strangely dim because it's your light, your glory, and your grace, Father God, that we focus on. 
You know, you may be here tonight and you say, I've never experienced God's grace. I've never experienced God's touch in my life. I've never accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. I've never fixed my eyes on Him. But you're here tonight and you say, but I want that touch. I want that touch from God. I want to know what that's like. And I want to know that when my day comes, that I'm on my way to heaven. You know, today I had the honor of preaching a funeral of a friend. A friend that was way too young to be gone. And you may be here and you say, I think I've got all the time in the world. I don't think you do. I don't think you do. And here's the deal. If I'm wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. But if I'm right and you don't make it right with God, you're in trouble. So I'm just asking you, if you're here tonight and you say, I need that relationship with God. I've never accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're out there watching us online. And you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I just want to give you the opportunity tonight because God created this moment just for you. He knew this moment would be here and He silenced everything around you so that you would focus in on Him. And so if that's you, I just on the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. You can do that even online. And we'll make sure that we get all the information that you need. One, this moment was created just for you. Two, you never have to wonder again. Three, if that's you, just lift your hand. This is your moment. Is there anybody at all? Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise tonight. I thank you, Lord, that we can settle it in our soul, that it is well. I thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to be in your house and to be in your presence. I'm excited about what you're going to do here tonight. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you came to the house of God? It's warm and toasty in here. It's awfully cold outside, but it's warm and toasty in the house of God. Remember to pray for Pastor Chris and Tony and Zeke and Wayne. They're going on a bear hunt. Still going on a bear hunt. Lisa, Lisa and I were talking. We, we both have done preschool years ago, and uh, we used to sing a song to the kids, going on a bear hunt, going on the bear hunt. Do you see what I see? Well, I don't think they've seen anything. <laughs> no bears, but they've seen lots of snow. And I don't think that's fair. I don't like that. So I'm hoping that they bring the snow back with them. As long as they get back, I'm hoping they bring the snow back with them. I don't care what y'all say. I want it to snow. So, um, but anyway, just be praying for them. I know they're having a good time and they're relaxing and I know they're preaching to each other. Uh, they're, fulfill, they're filling themselves with the Word of God. I know that. But um, it's good to be able to go and relax. And so you all just pray for them. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Trina Wicker's family. Uh, we laid her to rest today. And um, what an incredible, incredible service. I don't think I've ever... 
And I've been to a lot of funerals. But I'm telling you, the atmosphere in there was so anointed. The songs that they picked were just incredible. They couldn't have picked songs any better for her. And, um, but it's tough. It's tough losing a mama. It's tough losing a sibling. It's tough losing a child. I've never experienced that. So you all continue to pray for them. I know they're going to need your prayers in the days to come. But it's like what I told them today. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Because we still serve a God who's on the throne and who has not quit. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen to these announcements and then we'll get started in the word. Hey everyone, if you have recently made the decision to follow Christ, we just want to congratulate you. So what do you do now? Well, we would love to help you discover the next steps in your journey. Please take a moment and text the word decision to the number on the screen so that we can continue to stay in touch with you. We believe it's not about where you've been in life, only where you're going. So welcome. Our hope is that you truly come to know God, find freedom from your past, and discover your purpose so that you can go out and make a difference. As we enter the message portion of our service, we would like to ask you to extend the courtesy of quiet to those being ministered around you. We believe that you are here for a purpose and God has something He wants to say specifically to you. Our hope is that you leave here encouraged and closer to Him than ever before. Now, let's get ready to enjoy and receive God's Word. see you. I can see who all's here. Has everybody stayed warm today? Was it was it warmer today than it was yesterday? Today was colder, right? Yesterday was a little warmer, but the day before was really cold. That's what my body has told me. It's like I'm like, what are we, what are we doing here? But I think winter is here. Winter is upon us. Christmas time's here you believe it? Christmas is here. Wow. I'm excited about Christmas. Our granddaughter, I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Um, she enjoyed it last year, but man, she's, she's already really enjoying it this year. She enjoys, she gets up every morning and the first thing she tells her mama is she wants the Christmas tree turned on and, and she comes over to my house. She calls me Shishi. She comes over and she says, Shishi, turn the tree on and She's got a little mailbox, and we have it there by the tree, and that's her little mailbox, and she can write letters to Jesus, and she can put those uh, letters in the mailbox, and um, she's going to get a letter from us on Christmas Day and um, telling her how proud God is of her, and so I'm excited about doing that this year, and we started that last year, and so there's just a lot of fun stuff going on at Christmas time. And so um, be joyful. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to get started. Um, I'm, like I said, I, I preached a funeral earlier today. So I went home and I changed hats and got this message together. But this message has been on my heart for a little while. But I think what a perfect time for it. And I hope that I do it justice. I hope that I share it the way that God shared it in my heart. But, you know, I just think we all need to just enjoy life. And there's so much that's going on right now that, that just seems to make it hard. I'm not denying that at all. But we have to just stop and enjoy life. There's so much that's going on in the world that we live in. It just seems harder and harder and harder to enjoy life because we just get busier and busier and busier. And then things become so stressful. The more we do, the more stressful that it gets. You know, there's, there's stress in jobs. We have uh, the stress of some people have lost jobs this year, the stress of politics, the stress of finances, the stress over a pandemic, the stress over homeschooling, stress over the holidays, stress over family problems, stress in our community. There's just stress, stress, stress. And we're, we just, some of us just feel like on the inside we're just being pulled. 
in so many different directions. Stress, it's everywhere. We go day to day dealing with all the pressures of life, and we as humans aren't meant to deal with those pressures. We're not meant to deal with those pressures, and things get stressful, and I'm telling you, as humans, we can't carry all that. And we try to, and I don't know why we try to, because the Word of God tells us to do something different, but we try to carry all that stress, and I'm telling you, eventually, because we're built about like a pressure cooker, and something's going to blow. Something's going to happen, and especially this time of year, we see it more and more. We're going to blow up on our coworkers. We're going to blow up on employers. We're going to blow up on our employees. We're going to blow up on our spouse. We're going to blow up on our kids. Or we're just going to implode on ourselves. We're just not equipped to hold all that. And if you'll go with me to John 10.10, 10, and I'm going to jump through a lot of scriptures, but it says the thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy, and I have come that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. But I want to focus, I have come that you may have and enjoy. See, we want to just say, I've come that you may have life. But he said, I come so that you can have and enjoy life. What does it mean to enjoy life? It means to take pleasure in. It means to possess and to benefit from. See, we're not just to go through this day-to-day -day life just going from one day to the next the same, you know, get up in the morning, you get ready, you go to work, and then you leave work, and you go pick up the kids, and then you go home, and you cook supper, and then you put the kids in the bathtub, and you get them ready for bed, and then you go to bed, and you go to bed exhausted, and then you get up the next morning, and you go to work, and then you go, and you pick up the kids, and then you bring them home, and you do the bath time, and you do the supper time, and then you go to bed exhausted, and then you get up the next morning, and you go to work. Does all that sound familiar? But... You're living life, but we're not enjoying life. And if we only live life, then we'll find ourselves overwhelmed. One of the most important lessons that we can learn is my ability to enjoy life is not based on having circumstances that I consider enjoyable. See, it may not be. I'll say that again. My ability to enjoy life is not based on having circumstances that I consider enjoyable. I may not enjoy going to work, but I can enjoy going to work. I may not enjoy, I may not like cooking supper, but I can do it with a joyful heart. See, enjoying life is an attitude of the heart. You can have an attitude of not enjoying life, and it's going to show in everything that you do. We talk about it all the time here, a spirit of excellence, doing things with the spirit of excellence. This week, uh, our staff got together, and we worked on all of the uh, paper good boxes that we're giving out to the senior citizens tomorrow, and we put all those together, and... Wow. That was a task. But we enjoyed it and we had fun. Even when we come up, was it two cans? Two cans off. And we had done 150, 156 bags. They're saying it because they know we, well, they counted them a lot. 156 bags, and we come up two cans off. Now, it would have been easy to have just said, well, something's off somewhere, and it'll get figured out in the wash. My mom used to say that all the time. It'll come out in the wash. But a spirit of excellence says, nope, we're going to go through all those bags again, and we're going to figure out where we're off. And you know what? It was not our fault. 
because somebody at the packing house put two cans of green peas in the pallet of, two, of green beans. That's what happened. We couldn't figure out why we had extra green beans, and it's because we're going through and going through, and all of a sudden I went, whoa, whoa, we got, we got green peas in here. How did that happen? But I'm telling you all, we laughed, and we had a good time because it would become a game to all of us. Who's going to find it first? Who's going fi- fi- to find where we messed up first? And what none of us ever thought about green peas being in there. We were looking for extra corn or something like that. But all of a sudden, bam, there were some green peas, and we got to laughing about it. Well, So a task that was really hard, we chose to do with a spirit of excellence, and we chose to enjoy. It was an attitude of the heart. What's the attitude of your heart? What's the attitude of your heart in this situation? The Word of God says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, let me hang around you for a little while, and I can tell you what the attitude of your heart is. Amen? You can be doing something you absolutely loathe and still enjoy life. Some of the best memories that I have in my life are doing things that I absolutely did not want to do. But somehow in that process, something happened and we were laughing hysterically because we were choosing to enjoy life. We were absolutely choosing to enjoy life. And so you can bring laughter out in anything. See, it's our approach to the task at hand. How are we going to approach it? Are we going to approach it grumbling? Are we going to approach it complaining? Because now you're already speaking it into existence. You know that, right? So when you're going into it and you're grumbling and you're complaining about having to do it, you're already speaking the bad, you're, you're already speaking the miserable, the misery on you. And so your mouth is getting you in trouble. And so it's how we approach the task at hand. It's our heart's attitude. It's a heart check, right? we got to find a way to enjoy what we're doing. We've all heard, look on the bright side. Just look on the bright side. Well, sometimes I'm like, hey, look, there is no bright side. Look, ar- <laughs> look around, Clark. <laughs> Was it look around, Clark, or look around, Helen? What's the, look around, Helen. <laughs> In the movie, uh, Christmas Vacation, yeah. There's nothing to be enjoyed. (laughs) But they had some funny things happen, didn't they? (laughs) Pastor tells me that all the time. There'll be something going on. And he'll be like, oh, look around, Ellen. (laughs) Nobody's leaving on this fun family Christmas. (sighs) And if you can't find it, then make it yourself. Just... You know, find something to be happy at. Make some joyful noise. Enjoy Jesus in the middle of doing the task. Enjoy Jesus in the middle of doing the task. I've met many people who just refuse to enjoy life, and I don't get it. But then again, I have to ask myself, maybe I do get it. Because I've been in seasons where I've just let the weight of the world, the weight of the circumstances weigh heavy on me. And I'm walking around with a long face. And you know how I can always tell? Somebody will inevitably call me and say, what's wrong? What's going on? Are you okay? Instantly I know. You're not enjoying life. It doesn't matter the circumstance. Put a smile on your face. Enjoy life. Amen? Amen. I heard Ed Wicker last night talking to someone. I was sitting back in the back and I was just watching the room and listening to the room. And someone came up to him and they were telling him how sorry they were. And they didn't know what else to say. And he looked at him and he said, well, God is still good. 
God is still good. Did you know that, he said? And I, uh, yeah. He's going to find something to rejoice about. It's an attitude of the heart. It was an attitude of the heart. I get it. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm preaching to you after the Holy Spirit's preached to me. Because I've been in seasons where it was tough. And I'd get phone calls and people would ask me, what's wrong? What's going on? What's going on? And I found myself crawling under the weight of life. Crawling under the weight of the world. And just staying there and letting it keep bogging me down and bogging me down and bogging me down. Listening to the lies of the enemies. Because it wasn't just one whispering in my ear. There were many whispering in my ear. And you could listen to that. And like what we talked about a minute ago, all of a sudden I wasn't focusing on the wedding bands. I was focusing on everything else around it. And just that weight, that weight. But I figured if this message was good enough for the Holy Spirit to preach it to me, it was good enough for me to tell you. Because I figure that I'm not the only person that's ever went through it. I'm not the only person that's ever had to just dig for some joy. Just dig way down deep on the inside of me. And try to muster it up. And if I can't laugh at anything else, I'm going to laugh at myself. Amen? See people all the time with long faces because of situations that are maybe even out of their control. People are stressed. People are worried. They're just weary from the heavy burdens of life. And I get it. Right now, people are tired. People are so tired and exhausted because that's what stress will do to you. That's what fear will do to you. That's what confusion will do to you. And I'm telling you right now, that is what is turning this world, is fear and confusion. And people are latching on to it, and it's causing exhaustion. We don't know which way to go. We don't know what's right to do. We don't know what's wrong to do. And it's causing us to be weighted down. And I'm telling you, the church is going to have to rise up with a joyful noise and help set this place on fire. Amen? Jesus himself understood stress. He understood being tired. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, it says this, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest, and I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, I am meek, humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, you will find relief, you will find ease, you will find refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet. Recreation, blessed quiet. Do you know what my most favorite sound in the whole wide world? I would love to say it's a baby laugh, but it's not. Because that's what most people say. But my most favorite sound in the whole wide world is not a baby laughing. My most favorite sound in the whole wide world is to, when I'm driving my car and I pull in somewhere and I shut the key off, that quiet. That's my most favorite sound in the whole wide world. It always has been. I used to go to my dad's house and my dad couldn't hear it thunder. And so every day when I would go and check on him at his house at about somewhere between 3 and 4 o'clock, I'd pull in his driveway and I'd shut my car off. And I'd set my alarm for 15 minutes and I'd lean my seat back. And I'd go sound asleep for 15 minutes. My alarm would go off, I'd jump up, I'd run in the house and he'd go, what have you been doing? Out there sleeping in my driveway again? <laughs> yeah. Because he could tell from the look on my face, I just woke up. But that's my most favorite sound, and I think about that when I read that scripture, blessed, quiet. How many of you all could use some blessed, quiet time? Just some blessed quietness. Well, how do we do that? That's, I, I read the scripture, but how do we do that? 
In Matthew 18, 3, he tells us. He says, And I said, Truly I say unto you, unless you repent, change, turn around, come like little children, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving. You can never enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, we need to be trusting God like little children. You know, have you ever seen little children, their parents are telling them something, and they just trust everything they say? There's not a care in the world. They've never had to worry about paying the bills. They've never had to worry about what what are we going to eat. They've never had to, to worry about the stresses of arguing with parents. Those little ones, they just, they just trust. I, th- I think of little Annie. Her, she just smile. I mean, she smiles from head to toe all the time. She smiles from head to toe all the time. There's not a care in the world. She has no clue if mom and dad are thinking about paying bills. She has no clue if, if mom and dad have been. She, she has no clue. She's just not a care in the world. Because she trusts that they're taking care of everything. Does our Heavenly Father not take care of us? Does He not take care of us? Why? Why are we walking around so sad? Why are we walking around so just with our heads hung, worrying about everything? Trust that God's got it all under control. Trust that God has your best interest at heart. And He's going to take care of you. And you may not even see it happening, but you just trust. You don't, you just know. She doesn't see that they're paying the bills. She doesn't see that mom's going to the grocery store and getting the stuff and cooking. She, she, just, she just knows that she's going to be taken care of. And that's the way we should be with our Heavenly Father. We should be like a child who doesn't have a care in the world, who just trusts that everything's going to be okay. See, I can even tell... My little granddaughter, Elise, I can tell her things and she just trusts that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Because I'm not going to lie to her. And if I tell her that I'm going to give her something she's not supposed to have that mama don't want her to have, like gummy bears or whatever it may be, she knows. But do you know that there's times when mama's told her no, And do you know who she instantly looks to? (laughs) Because she trusts that I'll do it. So when the world is telling you no, who are you looking to? When everything's getting crazy in the world, why are you looking at the world and getting so upset? Let's look to God and enjoy life an attitude of the heart it's just to enjoy life laughter is a great stress reliever the word tells us in Proverbs 17 22 it says a happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing but a broken spirit dries up the bones a happy heart is good medicine And a cheerful mind works healing. Just that right there could cure depression. A happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. Also in Proverbs 12, 25 it says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down. But an encouraging word makes it glad. Sometimes you're the only one that can give the encouraging word to yourself. You're waiting for the world to do it. The world's not going to do it. But if you've got the word of God in your heart, then you better get it up out of your mouth. Because anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down. But an encouraging word makes it glad. Also in Proverbs 15, 13, it says, A glad heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. A broken or crushed spirit cannot help but hurt the body. If your spirit is crushed, it's eventually going to hurt the body. The body and the soul are interlinked. So you crush the spirit, and then the mind, the will, and the emotions are crushed. 
and then your body will be next. It'll happen. And so you're going to have to make a decision, how far am I going to let this go? How far am I going to let this affect me? I was talking to a friend here not very long ago, and we were discussing what stress will do to the body. And you really don't know until you're letting it happen to your body, and you're trying to figure out what's happening to your body. And you start realizing, my spirit has been crushed. And the attitude of my heart has been turned the wrong way. And I haven't been enjoying life. And the longer that I chose not to enjoy life, the sicker my spirit became. And the sicker my soul became. And the sicker my body became. And I'm telling you, as a body of Christ, we need to make a decision to enjoy life. We need to make a decision to be happy. We, don't, we may not like everything that's going on around us, but we're going to have to change the attitude of our heart. We look around, we see it everywhere. But I need to encourage you to stop overcomplicating life. Stop overcomplicating life. We got to lighten up, we got to take time to laugh. We got to take time to love. Stop trying to figure it all out. Pastor Chris says it all the time. God's awake anyway. Go to sleep, get some rest, rest your body, and wake up the next morning refreshed, ready to go. Psalms 37 25 tells us this Once I was young, and now I am older. That's what I'm going to say. Once I was young, and now I am older, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned nor their children begging for bread. I've lived a sunset or two. I've been through a heartache or two. I've been through a rough patch or two. But I'm telling you right now, put that scripture back up there again. Now that I'm older, I have seen never, never has the godly been abandoned. Never has the godly been abandoned? Never have I seen their children begging for bread. God is going to take care of you, and that is something to be happy about. Amen? Don't work so much that you can't stop and enjoy life. I watch people do it all the time. I got to work, I got to work, I got to work, I got to work, and I got to go, I got to make. You know what? You're missing out on life. Pastor Chris and I are polar opposites on this. I'm a work, a work, a work, a work, a work. And he's like, we're going to stop and have some fun. We might, we'll get the work done. But it's going to take a little longer than what it's going to take you. But I'm going to have fun doing it. We say it all the time when we're on teams. Nobody wants to be on my team because I'm going to work you. And there's not going to be any fun. But I promise you I'll make up for it in the end. But Pastor Chris says, what if we don't get to the end? We're going to have fun. He's the guy I'm going to eat my dessert first, just in case Jesus comes back. I've had a good time. Right? And I'm the one, I'm, I'm uh-uh. But you know what? I missed out on a lot of fun things with Erin. And I sit and I hear her and her dad talk about a lot of fun memories. Where they just stopped in the middle of doing whatever. And had some fun. Do you know I remember a story of her husband, Chris. He, he, he used to talk about it all the time. He said one time he was in the old building. This was before they were ever dating or anything like that. And, and they were in the, we were in the old building. And he was in there. And Chris and Aaron come running through. And they were chasing each other. And I think they were even climbing over chairs and stuff, weren't they? Yeah, they were chasing each other, climbing over chairs. Just acting a fool. But he, he looked at that moment and he said, I want a family like that. I want to do those things. See, I would have never done that with Aaron. I'd have been like, get off those chairs. You are not. You know better than to get on them chairs. But that's not fun. So I've had to learn to lighten up a little bit. But I'm going to tell you something. She, she's fun. 
I don't care if she gets up on the refrigerator. I've got pictures of her in my refrigerator. I'd have never let Erin in the refrigerator. But I've got pictures of Elise standing in my refrigerator. Because Sue's learned to lighten up a little bit. And Sue's learned not to be serious all the time. And I've learned that stains are memories. <laughs> I've learned all that. But I was guilty of missing out on a lot of life. I tell the story all the time about when the team went to Haiti. And they laugh and they talk about how wonderful it was. And they're talking about their luggage never got there. And I hear it and my insides still cringe. <laughs> and they talk about how much fun they had and how awesome it was. And I just speak up and I say, it's because I wasn't there. Yeah. I would have made it pure misery on you. <laughs> because I could not have enjoyed that. And I got to saying that so much and I heard that and I thought... That's the attitude of your heart, Sue. And you'll never be able to go and do something like that with that attitude. It was the attitude of my heart and it was what I was saying out loud. So I have learned Sue will put all the stuff she needs in her backpack <laughs> and I'll go across the country. But I won't be left without clothes. I'll plan ahead. It's on video. They got it. I've said it. I'm going. Right? But it become an attitude of the heart, and I had to learn to lighten up. So here's a great confession that we can say every day. Psalm 118, 24. Every morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God made this day for me. God made this day for you. He has something great planned. You need to enjoy it. And if you don't find something, you need to realize you're breathing and you got something to rejoice about. Amen? The word rejoice is a verb. The word rejoice is a verb, it's an action word, and it's to show great joy. So we need to enjoy life. We don't need to just be lazy, sit back doing anything, but we need to enjoy the task at hand. I don't know what it is that you're doing, but you need to enjoy the task at hand. Enjoy the ability to do it. Amen? Yes. See, I've made a decision to rejoice. I've made a decision that those withering up dry bones... They're coming to life. They're coming back to life. So I'm going to have the praise and worship team come on up here. And I'm going to teach you a little song that we used to do. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I didn't tell them they were doing this. Are they smiling? I'm not looking. Are they enjoying life? They're enjoying life? A couple of them are enjoying life. I'm not going to look at them. I'm just going to tell you, you better get your heart in the right attitude. <laughs> but this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I used to sing this song with Aaron every morning on our way to school. And it went something like this, and we're going to do it together here in just a minute, but I'm going to get you up to speed on it, right? So you're going to repeat after me part of it. I'll go, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then we're going to sing together. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Repeat. This is the day. Everybody together. At the Lord has made made and so you do that and you change the attitude of your heart so we're going to do it together y'all ready here we go i'm going to do it you help them repeat you ready here we go this is the day this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made i will rejoice i will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad everybody in together it. this is the day that the lord has made 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Again, you're not convincing me. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord Come on. has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now you go last time. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Are you ready to rejoice? Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you. Father, we change our heart's attitude. And we have an attitude of praise. We have an attitude of rejoicing because, Father God, you made this day. You made this day with me in mind. You made this day with something for me to do. And so, Father God, I will rejoice in it. I will be glad in it. And I will worship you, Father God. I will worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. I give you praise today. Father, we love you. You've been so, so good to us. You've been so good to us. And so, Father God, we just want to turn our hearts towards you and let you know how grateful we are. We're so grateful that we have a roof over our head. We're so grateful that we have food on our table. We're grateful that we have shoes on our feet. Father God, we're so grateful that you've given us so much. And so we will be glad. And we will rejoice with you. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you going to start your day off a little different? Make sure that the attitude of your heart is where it needs to be. Amen. Amen. If you'll just sit down for just a moment, I'm gonna, we're going to do things just a little bit different. You all can go and sit down. Thank you all for helping me. But we're going to do things just a little bit different. I'm going to look at this camera, and I'm going to tell you all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm so grateful that you have. Listen, do not forget that at the Welcome Center, uh, we have cards uh, about the blessing service, and you may be out there and you say, I want to get in on that blessing service. Well, you can call the office, 270-965-9200, and you can ask to have one of those blessing cards mailed to you. And um, we've, we've already done that with some people, but you can have that blessing card mailed to you. You can fill that out, what, what you're believing God for in 2021, and you can uh, mail that back to us, and I promise you, Pastor Chris and I will look at it, and um, we will pray over that. And, um, but we just want you to know that we love you and we are so thankful that you've joined us tonight. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad that you tuned in and we would love for you to join us here at any of our in-person services. For more information about us here at Life in Christ Church, check out our Facebook page or our website. We hope the rest of your day is blessed. And remember, it's not where you've been in life only where you're going.